Hello, my name is Jamie Knukin and welcome to IBD School. In this video, IBD School 213, we will be talking about blood clots and how they can affect patients with IBD. Blood clots are a collection of fibrin, platelets, and red blood cells within a vein or an artery. Although blood clots can happen anywhere in the body, they typically occur more commonly in the veins of the legs or in the lungs. There are many different causes of blood clots, some of the most common being hereditary clotting disorders or decreased physical activity, which can result in a decreased blood flow in your legs. Other factors that increase your risk of blood clots include active inflammation, as seen in our IBD patients, smoking, the use of oral contraceptives, pregnancy, or having a diagnosis of cancer. In rare cases, if left untreated, blood clots can move from the legs to the lungs. This is called a pulmonary embolism and can result in heart problems or even death in some patients. However, if detected properly and treated, blood clots can be dissolved without causing any problems. Blood clots are more likely to appear in IBD patients who are hospitalized for active inflammation than in those patients with mild inflammation who are not hospitalized. One study showed that patients with active IBD who are hospitalized are significantly more likely to get blood clots than the general population. We do not treat outpatients with mild inflammation for the prevention of blood clots, as the risk for blood clots is usually increased in patients who have very active inflammation, are not very mobile, and are being treated with steroids, all of which happen in the hospital. Depending on where the blood clot may have formed, and based on the symptoms that have appeared in that area, like swelling, pain, or redness in the legs, a physician may order an ultrasound to take a look and determine whether the blood clot is causing a patient's symptoms. Blood clots are often treated with a blood thinner, which can be administered as an injection or taken as a pill. This prevents the blood clot from enlarging while your body works to dissolve the blood clot. Most patients require therapy for three to six months, but some patients require treatment for longer. The good news is, is that we have effective ways to prevent blood clot formation in patients who are hospitalized with active IBD. In the hospital, we use a smaller dose of an injection blood thinner, which has been shown to be effective in decreasing the risk of clot formation in IBD patients. Some patients can notice mild bruising at the site of their injection, but this is only temporary. Other patients worry about bleeding associated with taking blood thinners, but significant bleeding is rarely associated with these smaller doses of blood thinners used to prevent blood clots. What's most important is that the benefit to prevent blood clots outweighs any small risks associated with these low-dose injections. Not all patients with active IBD need prevention therapy. Only patients hospitalized with active inflammation, as discussed, the patients at the highest risk, should receive therapy to prevent blood clots. Even if you are active in the hospital and walking around, studies have shown that this is not as effective as taking an injection-based blood thinner to prevent blood clot formation. If you are hospitalized with IBD, you should work with your physician to discuss options to prevent blood clots caused by active inflammation. I'm Jamie Knukin, and thank you for watching IBD School.